Hi guys, welcome back to a new episode. So, how many of you have actually received questions like, when do you plan to have kids? You've been married for so long, no plan for kids? Well, at least for me, I was in that situation before. And today, I'm just going to share with you all the issues that I face with infertility. I got married to my wonderful husband in 2014 and we kind of knew immediately that we wanted to have kids. But months after months, um, I was faced with disappointment and I thought that I may actually slip into depression over this whole baby making project. But I'm glad that he kept reassuring me that you know everything will be okay and there will always be something planned out for us. So after trying for about one and a half years, um, I felt that you know we should seek some help. So I went to make an appointment in one of the fertility clinic in the hospital. We did the various tests and found out that I actually have a 5cm blood cyst near my right ovary. Well, that at least solved the mystery of me having my dysmenorrhea. Um, so I did the necessary procedures and my gynae decided that um, we should try naturally for another three more months. Three months later, we came knocking back to her door again. There's actually three different options for infertility treatment. First would be IUI, second would be SOIUI, and lastly would be IVF. As my menses was irregular and I have a condition called PCOS, my granny suggested that I do um, SOIUI partly because um, I was still relatively young at that point of time. But I decided to go against her advice and opted for IVF. The reason why I chose to do IVF is firstly due to cost. So in Singapore, the government do provide grants for couples going through um, ART and we're also able to use our Medisafe up to $15,000. However, during the first cycle, you are only able to use $6,000. And after calculating the price for SOIUI and IVF, SOIUI costs about $5,000, while IVF, after the grant, it costs about five dollars to $6,000 as well. Secondly, um, the chances for IVF is definitely way higher compared to SOIUI, so I decided to opt for the latter. I'm so glad that I went with my gut feeling and opted for IVF because the real reason why I couldn't conceive is because I have too many empty follicles. This was actually found out during my embryo retrieval procedure. So I have about 30 over follicles to be harvested during my scan. However, the embryologist only managed to find 18 eggs in my follicles. 18. So there's actually two ways of fertilization. First would be natural, whereby the million of sperm starts fighting for that one and only egg. Secondly would be ICSI. So ICSI is whereby the embryologist would take a good sperm and inject directly into the embryo itself. Um, as my husband didn't have any issue, we were given the natural fertilization option. So you must be thinking if the egg retrieval procedure was a scary one, um, fear not because it was done under sedation. The last thing I remember was telling my husband, see you on the other side. And the next thing, I was already out in the recovery room. I received a call from an embryologist the next day and she told me that I had 16 of them fertilized. However, only 8 progressed on to the next stage. And she also told me that my gynae has scheduled me for a day 3 transfer. This is how a day 3 embryo actually looks like. And we also call the day 3 embryo an 8 cell embryo. After the transfer, it's what we call the 2 weeks wait. During this period, it was so nerve-wracking that you know, I had a lot of mixed emotion. You know, there was a lot of how and what if. The nurses even had to remind us not to pee on the stick and to wait for the blood test. Well, being a defiant patient, I went to pee on the stick. And even then, the results caused my emotion to be in turmoil. Um, at first, I saw two lines. And the next day when I test again, it showed me one line. Like, 
what is going on? So I thought the whole IVF procedure was a flop and I didn't think much about it anymore but just to enjoy the remaining hospitalization leave that I have before returning to work. So one night my husband asked me to test again since I have lots of cheap test kit and to our pleasant surprise it actually showed two lines but I couldn't believe what I see and I decided that I needed to test again that it's confirmed we're pregnant. However, my pregnancy wasn't exactly a very smooth one. Um, I had a condition called OHSS, which is also a side effect from IVF itself, whereby the fluids from my ovaries are actually leaking into my abdomen. So even though I was about one month pregnant, I looked as if I was five months pregnant. So there was a better wave morning sickness for 16 weeks, and I had threatened labor during week 30, and I finally delivered her during week 35. <laughs> By sharing with you guys my journey on trying to conceive, um, I just wanted to let you know that you're not alone, and there's actually many people facing the same issue like us. The most important thing is to seek help early if you feel that you have any issues in conceiving, and there's really nothing to be ashamed of. I was actually the youngest patient to go through IVF in that hospital. And if I were given a choice, I would definitely go through the procedure again just to bring my little girl into the world. So if you have any questions about IVF, do leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So that's all for today. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. There's actually three different options for info. There's actually three... Uh...